Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Apple have launched some new products. They didn't launch a new iPhone, but they did launch a new iPad that has the Apple A14 processor in it. And that's quite rare because up until now we've kind of seen the new processors appearing first in the iPhone and then later in an iPad model of some kind. So the A14 has now been announced and we have a few details about it. So I want to look at the A14 and then see how it compares to what's coming we hope from Qualcomm, what's coming we hope from Samsung and see what it means for the rest of this year and into 2021. So if you want to find out more, please well, let me explain. So let's start by looking at the A14 and seeing what we know about this new chip. Okay, so Apple have released the A14. So what do we know about it? It's a new processor, of course, the successor to the A13. And as I mentioned, surprisingly seen first in an iPad and not in an iPhone. That does raise the question, does this mean the iPhone would have a different variation of the A14? My thinking is not because uh, when they've used uh, the chip in the iPhone in an iPad, they've gone the other way. They've maybe you know made the X version or, or whatever. So I think we're probably going to see the same A14 in the iPhone. It's built on five nanometers. Apple quite rightly saying they are the first company to commercially start shipping devices with five nanometer uh, chips. And of course, made at TSMC. 11.8 billion transistors, which is just an incredible number. And that's up from 8.5 billion transistors in the A13. So that's a significant growth there uh, that Apple have used uh, in the new uh, processor. And it's uh, still a six core processor. So that's two high performance cores, which we believe the name is Firestorm. That's the code name. And then four power efficiency cores, which we believe they're new ones as well. So that's Ice Storm. So it's not the same power efficiency cores as we had last go around. And then there is a four core GPU. And of course, there's the whole history on where does some of the technology for that GPU come from, mainly from imagination, how much of it is imagination's IP, how much of it is Apple's design. That's a very blurred area that no one is prepared to talk about. And then, of course, we've got the faster neural engine, which we'll talk about in a moment. So as I said, here we can see it's a six core uh, CPU, four high efficiency cores, two high performance cores. Interesting, they put the high efficiency cores first. Normally you'd put the high performance cores two and then four. They've put it four plus two. I don't know whether that means anything or just the way the person wrote the slide. Now, here's the big thing. Apple are saying that it's a 40 percent faster CPU. Now, this raises a whole bunch of questions. The first is, is that 40 percent single core? So does that mean that one of those Firestorm high uh, high performance cores is 40% faster? Or is it multi-threaded, which means the whole CPU, when you take it across on a heavy multi-threaded workload, is that 40% faster? Or is it, uh, you know, something different? Just, is it 40% in the high performance cores, 20% in the power efficiency cores? Or maybe the power efficiency cores are 40% better and the, you know, we just don't know. My guess is a 40% increase for multi-threaded when you're using all six cores. But here's the big question that, of course, uh, is that it's compared to what? Because Apple were comparing it to the previous iPad in that series. So, of course, that means it wasn't the A13. It's in fact, it was compared to the A12. So the A13 was already 20% better than the A12, which if you do the maths, and I'll just go through this quickly in a minute because percentages can be a bit tricky sometimes, that means it's a 16% increase compared to the A13. And this is assuming that all these percentage numbers that Apple have been quoting over the years uh, are the same metric. They're measuring the same thing. They haven't changed to measuring something different. So whatever they measured at 20% in the A13 uh, compared to the A12 is what they're measuring when they're going from the A12 to the A14. So uh, if you look at the the uh, the uh, percentages, if we say that the A12 performance is a baseline at one, then the A13 is 1.2, 20% greater. And then 1.2 times 1.16, so 1.2 times 20%, 20, uh, sorry, 16% gain over 1.2 is 1.4. So it's a 16% gain over the A13, which itself was a 
20% gain over the A12, and then the A12 to the A14 is a 40% gain. So, as I said, percentages can be a bit tricky sometimes. Now, there did leave a couple of other clues which are interesting. One is that there is more instruction level parallelism. They actually stated that. So that means that if you've got a, a pipeline, and I've got several videos on this channel and on Android Authority about pipelines, when those instructions are going down the pipeline, at some point they can be executed where they actually happen. And you can do some of those things in parallel. So if you've got something that's storing something in memory and you've got something that's doing an ad, for example, well, both of those things, if they're not connected, can happen at the same time. And that's instruction level parallelism. It's not two tasks running in parallel or two threads in a task. It's actually at the instruction level. And Apple have said that they've increased that, which means they've made the pipeline of this design wider. That's the term you would use. And they've also said they've got bigger, higher performance caches, which may explain where some of those extra billions of transistors have gone. And we get to the GPU side, again, four core GPU, 30% faster graphics. But again, that was compared to the A12. And when you do the maths, that means it's 8% compared to the A13. So we're looking at a 16% CPU increase and an 8% GPU performance increase from the A13. So when we come to the iPhone, when that gets announced, we'll be interested to see what numbers actually Apple start to quote there. And the other thing that a lot of people are, and quite rightly so, are talking more and more about, of course, is the machine learning. So it's a 16 core neural engine, uh, and that means it runs at 11 tops. So tops is trillions of operations per second. Now, tops is seem to be the number that people are quoting. Of course, neural engines are different to CPUs, are different to GPUs. Really, we haven't really worked out maybe the best way to express the performance, but trillions of operations. Uh, and of course, you've got a neural network. There are lots of operations going on as the, 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 the different weights and things and the matrices are being calculated and so on inside of a neural network. Uh, and that's 5.5 tops compared to the A12. So they are right in saying that it's twice as performant. And also there are some second generation machine learning accelerators in the CPU itself, which are accelerated matrix multiplication. And there seems to be these proprietary AMX instructions that Apple have added to the A14 that were also in the A13. And these are non-ARM standard instructions, but they are putting them in and they seem to be happy to announce that they're putting them in. So they're not trying to keep that a secret. So that maybe there's a whole separate video here about whether they're, what that means in terms of compatibility between you know our different ARM chips across different suppliers. But we'll leave that for now. But it seems to be there are these accelerators built in. And of course, it's an SOC system on a chip. So you're not just getting a CPU and a GPU, you're getting all these other things you've got listed here, you know, cryptography acceleration, and you've got, you know, a video encode and video decode, and there's stuff to do with computational photography. And there's the neural engine we mentioned. And there's all these things there's audio stuff because this is a system on a chip and it's not just a CPU. It's all the other stuff that you get uh, built around it that allows the whole device to function doing all the different things that it needs to do. And here's Apple's last kind of uh, big overview. So you've got the A14, machine learning, six cores, five nanometers, 11.8 billion transistors, uh, the machine learning accelerators in the CPU, the neural engine uh, in the uh, as a separate part of the SOC, uh, 11 tops, four core GPU, the security stuff, and an advanced signal processor. So that's the kind of the big ticket items they've got there for the A14. Okay, so that's the A14. So how does that compare to what we're expecting from uh, Qualcomm and Samsung? Of course, from Qualcomm, we're expecting the Snapdragon 875 and from Samsung we're expecting some kind of Exynos processor we don't know what the name will be the Exynos 1000 maybe we'll see so let's have a look at what we know about those chips what we think will be in those chips and how that compares to the A14 so let's just start by doing a refresher of what's available uh, today from ARM and that's of course the Cortex A78 and the Cortex uh, X1 I've got videos about both of these on this channel and so a 3 gigahertz Cortex A78 at 5 nanometer that's what we're expecting the uh, Snapdragon 875 to be and the next Exynos to be is 20% faster than an A77 Cortex A77 at 2.6 gigahertz but notice there 3 gigahertz 
2.6 gigahertz. So in fact, 2.6 gigahertz to 3 gigahertz is actually 15%. So of that 20%, a huge chunk of it is because of if they're quoting different clock frequencies. Now, 3 gigahertz is what we're starting to see in some chips, so that's not unreasonable. But basically, there's only this like 5, 6, 7%, because obviously different workloads are different, that have come from the actual uh, CPU. So the Cortex A78 in it's just it's micro architecture it isn't a huge leap forward it's a step forward five seven percent increase but then if you go down to five nanometer crank up the clock speed then you are going to get a faster uh, processor so that's what we hope we're going to see but the x1 the Cortex x1 is 30 percent faster than the a77 at the same clock speed so the x1 really is a huge step forward and of course the x1 is a special program that the partners who are working with arm have to get in on very very early it's not a, a sort of a shelf stock part that anybody gets their hands on you have to have been working with arm for maybe one or two years beforehand and at the moment we only think qualcomm have access to the x1 we'll find out but we only think it's qualcomm that have got access to the x1 so what that means is we're expecting the snapdragon 875 to be one cortex x1 core which will take the place of the prime core that uh, that uh, Qualcomm have been using in their last couple of generations. One core that's slightly highly clocked frequency, bigger caches. So that's the X1. And then three Cortex A78 cores, and then four Cortex A55 cores. So that means that there will be a 30% boost in single threaded performance. So that's really, really amazing. And that will do well for things like Geekbench scores when it comes to uh, the multi to the single threaded performance. And of course, much, much greater than what we're seeing 60%. Uh, from Apple, but again, we don't know what that 16% refers to. But I think because the Cortex A55 is always going to have the same performance as it's always had, maybe they'll clock it up to 1.9 gigahertz or 2 gigahertz, and so we might see a little increase there. The A78 is really only 5 to 7%, depending on the clock speed, could be higher than that, could get to. 10%, uh, 20%, depending on what they do. And then this one is a 30%. So my guess is that we're going to see a 10 to 15% boost in multi-threaded performance. So 15%, because these are going to be the same. That's not very much. That's the big ticket item. So multi-threaded, we're using all of these eight cores. So what we're what we going to see. So I'm estimating 15 I'd hope it's higher. That would be good. We will only know when we know what the clock frequencies are they're going to use and, and what the configurations they're going to use when they finally announce it. So that means if you've got the Snapdragon 875 versus the A14 in a multi-threaded environment, assuming that Apple's quoting number is multi-threaded, then you've got a 16% increase for the A14 and a 15% increase for the uh, Snapdragon 875. So now, obviously, these are so close that this is going to come down to a whole bunch of variables that we don't know, including, you know, the clock frequencies, including the workload, including, you know, uh, the speed of the memory, and all, all this other stuff. So this is basically it's neck and neck. That's what we're basically saying. So we're going to see the seat from the CPU side. We're going to see a kind of a neck and neck growth in both the Snapdragon 875 and the uh, A14 as we go forward. And that's going to be really interesting. That's why I put these kind of shocked eyes emoji over there. It's like, oh, <laughs> What are we going to see? So, you know, that's my kind of guess. And it was going to be really, really interesting when we see the actual chips come out. And then looking at uh, GPU and machine learning, we've got the Adreno 660, we hope, in the uh, Snapdragon 875. Now, Qualcomm said the Adreno 650 in the Snapdragon 865 was a 25% faster than the Adreno 640. Now, Apple, are, of course, are saying there is an 8% performance increase. Well, that's what we've calculated. So if Qualcomm can make the 660 anything greater than 8%, maybe not 25%, maybe 20%, maybe 15%, but we don't know. Maybe they'll be really surprised. Maybe they'll make 30% with the move to 5 nanometers. Who knows? But it definitely means that Qualcomm's graphic uplift its performance increase from this generation is going to be greater than what apple are offering there's no there's no doubt about that so that will be interesting to see what happens and then again we've got the ml now uh, apple were announcing 11 tops what's interesting is the snapdragon 865 was already at 15 tops so although apple made a big thing about the ai in the a14 well snapdragon was already at 15 tops so we're if they up that again you know even a little bit 
16, 17, 18 tops, or even up to 20 tops, then that's going to just going to blow whatever Apple have got out of the water anyway. So from the GPU and ML side of things, it looks like the Snapdragon 875 is going to beat the A14. So let's go on to the uh, Samsung Exynos. The last one was the 990, before that the 980. So what's it going to be? Is it going to be the 995? Is it going to be the Exynos 1000? We'll see. It's hard to predict because we're guessing there's no Cortex-X1 core in the next Exynos. So that's one thing. And so we're assuming, therefore, it's going to be four Cortex-A78 cores. Now, of course, they Samsung can do what it likes. It can try to do a prime core. It can try to do a 2 plus 2 setup, as it's done with previous Exynos Pros. We don't know what they're going to do. But if it's that, then it means it's going to be 5 to 7% faster than the current Snapdragon 865, which is not what, of course, people maybe want to hear. But... Snapdragon 865 compared to the Exynos was, that's a great thing. So it's much faster than the Exynos 990, whatever happens. So that's a good thing. Now, of course, we've got the GPU is a question. Are we looking at Mali GPU? Is it still Mali GPU this year or is it AMD GPU uh, this year? We don't know whether the AMD have managed to make their mobile GPU yet or whether we're one more year of Mali. That's what we're going to find out. And that will make a big difference in what we're going to talk about in terms of GPU speed compared to Qualcomm and then of course compared to Apple and again machine learning the Exynos 990 was also at 15 tops so again already faster than the A14 in terms of uh, what's available for machine learning so really Apple although they made a big thing about the 11 tops in the A14 up from 5.5 tops in the A12 actually the competition was already way ahead of them already. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos, well, why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.